when we think about competition, we think about opportunities for us to get better at figuring out what our owners need and then delivering it to them. We don't necessarily stay up night worrying about our competitors or thinking about what they're doing. We go to them and we steal good ideas and we, if we think that it can make us better and we definitely you know, try not to look stupid in the marketplace. We want to get better all the time because we want this community to have the best store. They own it. Our community owns this store. We have to take our owners with us on the journey forward. I mean, we have to, when we move, when we make changes, we're not just one store making changes, one owner making changes. We have 10,000 owners that we're trying to change, that we're trying to bring along. And so um, it's, that's something that we have to keep moving forward and we have to keep listening to them. And what I find is that our owners are at the cutting edge of the, of the food industry. So if we just listen to them and what they're looking for from our store and pick those things up, even if it sounds weird, like really you want a fermented drink that's made from mushrooms and tastes sort of like vinegar? Okay, like suddenly two years later that's our best selling product in our whole store. And it makes no sense, but by listening to our, our owners and our customers who know so much more than many of us about the food industry, and giving them what they need, we're not only fulfilling our reason for existing, but we're also going to stay one step ahead of our competition. I don't see us as only being in competition with uh, grocery stores or chains like Whole Foods or other natural grocers. We are in competition with them, but uh, there's a new category uh, called the fast casual out there. So I think the um, the competitors list has expanded from the usual suspects to anybody else actually that's selling food out there. You know, it appeals to uh, the busy uh, consumers that you have that they're in need of uh, high quality fast foods. And what we did actually was uh, changed our, our setup. We had a pretty horrible deli, not horrible in a sense, but it was mostly Cisco uh, related products. So the products that we were selling in the meat department, the chickens, uh, the free range chickens or organic chickens were not really the chickens in, in the deli cases. And a lot of people didn't really know that. Same thing with the produce. We had all kinds of local produce, organic produce. Uh, we had some conventional, but the deli was ordering different conventional uh, products. But, but these, the customers assumed that the produce and the meat that was in the deli cases were the same products that we were selling. So it's, it's a matter of authenticity. If you, if you come across as genuine, and in fact, if you are authentic and you are uh, genuine in your, uh, uh, what you're trying to accomplish and let people uh, figure it out for themselves, I, I think that's the key to it. And uh, the other part of it, too, then, is um, with your staffing. If you're investing in your staff, in the training, in, in the individuals, I think you're going to win on, on that end as well. I think if you get on that track and that road, if you're, if you're able to grow, you're able to provide new jobs for people that pay a decent wage, and it's important to get the big picture right, but it's also uh, important to pay attention to the details. See the overall trends, but don't forget about the, you know, keeping the store nooks and crannies clean. So that's, you know, that's important. You know, what is it going to take for us to, to thrive in the future? Um, you know, really it's about focusing on what we do best. You know, the high-touch customer service, uh, focusing on local products, and our perimeter departments, produce, meat, and especially deli, um, and keep providing important outreach and educational opportunities that we um, have in our community that's always set us apart from our conventional uh, com competition. Um, I always say that we are successful as a co-op when our products and service reflect the values of the community, and I think that's true. I think we really need to be aware of what our community values and to pay attention to the mid-level customer and not simply uh, cater continually to the core customer. What I also th see as a unifying thread amongst all these strategies is really making sure that your co-op has a strong brand identity that creates a cohesive image of what your co-op is to your members and to your community. Um, the only marketing or merchandising um, to the core um, you know, that's got to be this, uh, a thing of the past. I mentioned that earlier. You know, the co-op, um, 
as an alternative or fringe business is no longer compelling to consumers. Our products and unfortunately some of our messaging has been co-opted, uh, excuse the pun, to the extent that we have to struggle to be authentic and relevant to our customers and our members. I think that's one of our competitive advantages, our comparative advantage, and that's something that we need to rely on is creating those intimate relationships with our customers and our members that our conventional stores just can't do. So a number of years ago, we were thinking about our future and realizing that uh, we needed uh, to make some changes if we wanted to, to thrive into the future. And, and, and initially, that was about uh, improving our operations in various ways, including a renovation and expansion. We also realized at that time that while we would probably could have a second store here in Austin, and then actually we realized that we could have more than two stores probably uh, via market studies and things. And that uh, helped us to arrive at our concept of Wheatsville's big direction, which is about uh, ends accomplishment by uh, growing our uh, number of stores, sort of stores as the economic driver for creating our ends accomplishment. You know, we could grow to 10 stores, to $100 million or $150 million in sales, and still only be uh, a relatively small player here in the Austin market. Uh, where there's a billion plus dollars worth of groceries being sold today. Um, and so that really helped us to open our eyes to the possibility uh, that there could be more cooperative economy in Austin, uh, but we were probably going to be the ones that had to do it. And so we had to think bigger about uh, what we were going to be, what we were capable of and what we were going to try to pursue. And this uh, activity of, of, uh, of growing uh, to thrive has really been good for us as a, as a co-op, we've had more impact on our communities. Uh, we've had uh, we're, we're ultimately more stable uh, than we were when we were just one store. Um, and I think as we look across the country, a lot of communities could, uh, you know, there's people buying groceries from somebody else. And I'd really I have a vision of seeing more of those people being able to buy their groceries at a, at a, at a co-op. So one of the things that's really important to us at Wheatsville is our our culture. We think our culture is actually a strategic advantage. And our culture involves being the friendliest store in town. It includes open book management and a go direct uh, philosophy of how we talk to each other. And we think that uh, culture is the thing that uh, ultimately sets us apart uh, from our competitors. Um, our, you know, the, and the, our being a cooperative is at the heart of our culture, also, of course. And so, we strive to uh, not only maintain a positive culture at Wheatsville, but to actually build and grow. Uh, this positive culture so that um, no matter how many stores we have, that it still feels like Wheatsville, that uh, somebody who's, who's been shopping at Wheatsville since 1976 or someone who walks in the door today uh, gets a feeling of being welcome and, uh, and kindness and generosity and hospitality, and it doesn't feel like it's a cookie-cutter thing. It just feels authentic and real, uh, no matter whether it's one store or two stores, that their experience is one of of authentic kindness, generosity, and hospitality. Uh, and that piece of culture is something we're striving to preserve. And if we lose that, um, I will feel like it's a personal failure on my part, so I'm not going to let it happen. And I think part of the thing that needs to get left behind is this attachment to, you know, like smallness is, is, is good, that like that over that, or, or more like big is bad, I guess, is, is really what I'd like just to, to move away from. And uh, realize that uh, impact comes from volume and and uh, and scale, and so uh, I, I challenge us to think bigger about uh, the kinds of impacts we're having in our stores and in our communities. You know, because we're having way more impact now as a two-store, thirty million dollar co-op than we were when I got here, and we were a three point eight million dollar struggling co-op um, that you know really was just trying to stay alive every day. Uh, and I think that's ultimately going to be how we thrive in the future is, is uh, you know, the right size, um, ex uh, being ambitious about uh, how many people we can serve and how broad and diverse uh, a population we can serve. That's what I think uh, sets us up for a powerful, positive future. Um, well, we, we like to talk about being better grocers at the Merck. Um, so I think that just reminding ourselves that we are grocers and we need to do a great job with that. For us, that means having really friendly service and making our customers feel really welcome and cared for when they're here. 
having the right product selection. I think that sometimes we get caught up into somebody, you know, why do we carry the products we're carrying? Some of it might be based on national trends, but a lot of it might just be based on one person requesting something or the buyer really likes something, you know. I mean, we got to make sure we have the right products and we have to make sure the right price. So being better grocers also means that we uh, need to improve our systems. And so for a long time, uh, it seemed like it didn't really matter if we had an inefficient system, we could get away with it because, you know, labor was what it was. And now we're seeing that as sales growth is dwindling or non-existent, you know, labor expenses continue to get higher. So we are having to really uh, work on improving our systems and, and do more with a little less labor, which is, is a hard message um, to pass on to staff. But I think that they get excited when you ask them what can we do to make this process easier for you? What can we do to make this easier for customers, you know? So to thrive, we have to be better grocers um, because we're up against national chains, uh, corporate entities that really have things figured out. And for us, we've been figuring things out since 1974, you know? <laughs> and we pretend to be grocers. Um, but now we have to acknowledge that we really are grocers, and if we're going to thrive, we have to go to bat, and we have to get good at some of these things, so all of these things. Um, I think to thrive, we also need to remember that we're a co-op um, and to shout that out to, to make sure that people understand that we are um, owned by the community and to grow the ownership and understand that that's beneficial for the community, that that we're going to do local like nobody else is going to do local. That's a huge differentiator, and I think that comes with being a co-op.